Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where I hope I can help you with your photorealistic texturing project. I want to thank everyone for watching my last video and for all the great feedback. The comments that stood out to me is that people are comparing Substance and Mari, and that was not the intention of the video. Softwares are just tools, and the tools always improve and change, and intend to be result-driven, not software-driven. I'm interested in talking about texturing techniques that are always going to be useful despite what software we're using. So in today's video, I want to show you how to take your textures to the next level using a few artistic painting breakup techniques. You can use whatever tool you like. I will use Mari in this one. The breakups I'm talking about are value breakup, saturation breakup, and hue breakup. The word breakup is a word we hear all the time in film production. When something is looking too uniform, solid, or geometric, it starts to look CG and unnatural. If we aim to create something photorealistic, we will need to break up areas like that. So when I approach my textures, I give myself a checklist. Does this asset have enough color variation? Is there cool tones and warm tones? Does this asset has enough value variation, darker areas and lighter areas? Does this asset has saturation variation? Depends on the asset, you won't need everything on the list all the time, and amount is going to be different. A great texture artist will already direct these breakups and attempt to tell a story. Okay, now I want to show you how I use the checklist and make my texture better. Here's my red paint before any breakup. It's not bad, there are some details on it. Right now what you see is the red paint texture itself and a blend between the red and underneath black paint. Let's compare this with the reference. As you can tell, there's a pretty clear difference. There is more value shift and saturation shift on the reference. My texture right now looks quite simple compared to how the real thing looks. There's clearly more work to do, but I feel like a lot of artists stopped right here when it should be pushed further. So now I realize that value and saturation breakup is what this asset needs. I made this setup. I'm reusing the red paint texture connected to a HSV adjustment layer, then merged it to the main color. I did that four times and made a light red layer, dark red layer, desaturated red layer, and a bright saturated red layer, each of them driven by its own mask. There are many other ways to create a variation. Sometimes I will just project images on top of the paint. This is just how I did it on this asset. Taking another look at the reference and make sure I understand where the light paint should go. Looks like a lot of it is around the edge, surrounding the yellow area. So I painted on a mask and tried to mimic the reference. This is what it looks like. I repeated the same process for the rest of the breakup layers. I added some dark red area, some desaturated red area, and finally some really saturated red spots, which I think really makes the color pop. Looking at the reference again, we're still not there yet. The red seemed to fade towards the bottom. Let's add that into the paint. I created an overall desaturated paint layer, basically just plugged the diffuse into an HSV and merged on top. It's very easy to do this with nodes. By the way, this is my first time using nodes for an entire asset and I'm totally loving it. Even though each of the shifts seems subtle, it all counts and creates nice variations. Coming back to the reference again, there's an overall layer of dust, which can also create nice value and saturation breakup. Maybe this is the last thing that will tie everything together. I want to quickly show you what the dust mask looks like. I baked a small mask out of substance using the same technique I showed in the last video. If you don't know how, I suggest going back and watch the video. I am quite happy with how it turned out as an overall dust layer. Besides creating more value and saturation breakup, it creates a light layer of breakup for the spec as well and add to the realism. So this is what it looks like after adding dust layer. Comparing to the ref again, it definitely looks much closer. I hope you can see how adding all these breakup has made the texture much better. 
I want to quickly explain when we need to use these painting techniques in film production. We see two main types of photorealistic texturing tasks. The first one is just to match a real prop, vehicle, environment, or character. For this kind of tasks, we mostly need good observation. In production, there will be a lot of on-set photo reference provided if it's something pretty hero. A common way of making assets like this is to project diffuse and extract material masks from the photo. There are a few different techniques related to this type of work. Can make a future video on that if you guys are interested. The other type of photorealistic texturing tasks is to create something that doesn't exist based on concept and reference given. So besides good observation, we also need to have our fundamentals for this type of work. It is more difficult, but it's also more fun for the artists. When I was working on my Buddha mask, even though I had a set of reference, I still decided to texture it in a way where I think it looks good, since it's just a personal project and why not make it fun for myself. It's really important for us to have a solid art fundamentals so you can art direct your assets. This is all I have for you today. If there's anything I didn't explain well, anything confused you, or anything you need me to go in depth on, please leave a comment below and I will be more than happy to answer all your questions. My goal is to help you using my experience. So if there's any video subjects you want me to talk about or technique you want me to demonstrate, I will be happy to do that too. I will see you in the next one.